Okay, welcome to Wednesday. Ask Uncle Lee Wednesday. Um, and as always, um, if you have any questions, anything you would like me to talk about, um, just drop them in the comments and keep them coming. Um, you know, whatever questions come up, because then it keeps this particular slot going. And I won't run out of questions, and then I'm going to have to try and find something else to do on a Wednesday. <laughs> All right. So, uh, anyway, let's start. Welcome to my channel. You are entering the world of magic and mysticism with your host, Lee W. Johnson. Keep the lights on and help improve the channel by becoming a supporter for just $2.99 per month. Hit the join button. Okay, so the first question is from Kyo Wata. Uh, one who I believe is also refers to themselves as you demonia. Okay, so they said, uh, thank you for answering my question, Lee. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, I do have another one, if you don't mind. Not at all. Uh, would you mind sharing firstly if you believe in a spirit guide? Yes, I do. Um, I believe in a spirit guide and also believe in various... Um, we may call them, well, let's put it this way. When people talk about spirit guide, they, they're they referring to a particular entity, one singular entity, and this is probably um, your ultimate guide. Um, but you do have various guides as you continue. Um, and, you know, in reference to things like a power animal or a spirit animal or something like that, we may talk about the power animal being that one singular en singular entity, um, which is your guide and guardian. Um, but along your path, as you keep walking along your path, you're going to come again across various spirit animals um, or guides who are going to guide you in particular directions. And this is the same, it's not just applicable to these power animals and spirit animals. Um, it's applicable to daemons um, and to all various kinds of spirits. You, you, I mean, th let me just actually read the rest of your question here. Um, also, um, how you came to discover and realize your patron daemon. Um, I'm currently working on discovering these as well as a possible mentor daemon. Uh, any thoughts, experiences, experiences, advice would be greatly appreciated. Um, so this can also refer to the daemons themselves, the spirits, the spirit guides. Um, we have, we may come across one that, that stays with us for our whole life. Um, and that's very much in relation to what we may call a, um, uh, um, a power animal or the fetch beast, for instance. Um, it's that part of us that we just cannot be removed. So it's a spirit will remain w with us for the rest of our life, for our whole lives. And that may be then referred to our patron daemon. Um, I did speak about the matron and daemon, I think last week, um, and I, I do find the use of the words matron and daemon, or matron and patron, to be um, very interesting because of what they actually mean um, from a from a dictionary perspective. Um, I, I, I don't. I, I I prefer the witch father and witch mother myself, but um, you know I, I do use these terms obviously because other people know what I'm talking about then. But um, yeah, so we have this one daemon that may live or stay with us for our entire life but along the path along the way we have different daemons different spirits that come in guide us on particular things help us with particular projects um teach us particular things and they come in and they leave and it's the same with the spirit animals and that and that reference is that they they pop up on your path to push you in a particular direction to teach you a particular lesson to get something across um, so yeah, I definitely believe in a spirit guide, and, you know, all of this stuff, um, I have my own, so, you know, I, I do believe in them, but, um, don't forget the aspects of the, the various terms again, holy guardian angel, personal daimon, uh, the fetch mate, um, the companion spirit, um, it's that, I'm going to say aspect of our own soul, um, which is the intermediary between all things, ourselves and all things, um, all beings, all entities. Um, and the when you come into knowledge and conversation with it, um, then things just get easier. They become a lot, lot 
um, easier to actually accomplish. Um, you know, talking to spirits becomes easier. But, I mean, at that point, you've already been working with all this stuff and you, you have a lot of background. Um, so, naturally, things would come easier. But, um, yeah, just having that, not, that, that connection, uh, once you've been through that sacred marriage type of thing, um, that's definitely something uh, I would encourage everybody to pursue, um, no matter which specific um, aspects you speak about that. Actually, um, actually, I think it was last week um, on Into the Wildwood, we did, we, we actually did kind of a review and a discussion of the book, The Holy Guardian Angel, you know, which is an anthology book written by a variety of different people, which is fantastic. So um, maybe go and watch that as well. Might give you some, some other perspectives. Um, I'll... If I remember, I'll link to it in the description below. Um, but, yeah. Uh, can I really give you any uh, other thoughts or experiences? Um, one thing I will say is that when it comes to your matron or your patron or your witch father or witch mother, um there's different ways I find that people kind of um, experience that relationship. Um, as I said, these are the entities which stay with you for your entire life, whereas you may have other entities coming in and teaching you things um, as you continue. They come in and they go out. Um, those experiences are quite tangible. You you know, you're interacting with these spirits on a very um, personal and um, direct manner direct level whereas these uh which mother and which father major and patron uh daimon um or daemon is they kind of i find that they stay in the background um that it's it's quite rare that they'll actually come forward and speak to you directly um, they do on occasion but um they don't always do it they kind of stay in the background and they, they're kind of the guiding hand um um, other people, however, experience them very directly on a daily basis. Um, some people will only work with that particular spirit and no other spirits. Um, but a lot of people do experience them very directly, very personally, um, very tangibly. And I just find that I don't. Um, it doesn't mean that you know one way of working with them is wrong and the other way is wrong or right. Um, it just means that it's different experiences. So, you know, if you do find that you have your your patron daimon and you have your mentor daimon, the relationship's going to be different, it's going to feel different, you're going to experience it differently. Um, or you may not, you know, but if you do, don't start questioning, are you doing something wrong? Um, rather ask the question, am I doing something right? Um, and you'll probably get an answer, especially from your mental daimon. Um, but discovering them, discovering them is really about just reaching out. Um, it's not a good idea to reach out kind of generally because then you just attract whatever spirits you come along. Um, what I would do is a particular spirit that you feel connected to. Um, a lot of people will actually feel this connection with Lucifer, I found. Um, they just tend to go directly to Lucifer. And Lucifer is a good choice in this in this fashion because or for this particular thing, because um, Lucifer is the, the Gnosis, the, the light bringer, um, the bringer of knowledge and, and such things, and this is something you want knowledge of. So, you know, reaching out to Lucifer to kind of give you an idea of what this, who this spirit is, um, is probably a good avenue to go down. Um, there are various other things you can do. A lot of people will go and have a look at their, their, their natal charge and find out which is the most prominent element. Um, other people will have a look at tarot. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways. When it comes to getting the name of your holy guardian angel, for instance, um, you know, the specific methods that are spoken of in ceremonial magic and abramella, um, you know, so you can do that through the use of geomancy, for instance. But, um, yeah, I think the easiest way is just to get a spirit that you feel a connection with, you feel like you can trust, um, you can, that will help you to bring this information, such as Lucifer, reach out to them and ask them to give you an answer. 
and just keep doing that. You know, you might not get it immediately, but just keep doing that. Over, you know, every now and again, just reach out, ask for an answer, um, and you'll probably get one eventually. Um, and don't disregard that answer being in some abstract manner, such as, you know, flicking through social media one day and every single post just points to the same thing. Um, and it's just uncanny that it does. Uh, you know, we, we do, a lot of people do tend to kind of read omens and everything. Don't do that. Um, but there are times when it is so in your face that you just cannot say no to it. Um, it's just <laughs> one of those things that is just so obvious um, that, you know, you have to go with it. But, uh, yeah, just keep keep going. Eventually it'll come. And you've probably, I mean, they're already there. You just need to become aware of it, really. All right. Um, so I am going to go on to another, oh, no, I cut my forehead off completely. Um, go on to the next question, which is from uh, Nick Smith Chandler. Uh, hang on. Nick Smith Chandler, 458. Um, hi Lee, have you received any info regarding the meeting of your pets after your death? I mean, for some of us, they mean the world to us. Um, I haven't specifically met, you know, had information about meeting your pets after your own death. Um, I have died, but I did come back, so <laughs> I haven't permanently died yet. And if I did, I probably wouldn't be doing this show. But, um, yeah, I do know what you mean, and uh, not everybody does. I do. I actually um, include my my dead pets um, on my ancestor altar. Um, they were part of my, my family. Um, they Therefore, I consider them part of my ancestors. Um, they provided solace. They provided comfort. They provided um, some good information sometimes, you know. Pets can be quite knowledgeable. So, you know, in that regard, yes, um, I would consider them uh, ancestors. I also actually, no, thinking about that, I did have a dream once. Um, I believe it was in the ancestral realm uh, that I, I, I went to. My mother was there and one of my dogs. So, yes. I would definitely say that, um, you know, they, they are in the ancestral realm. Um, they are, they're with us. They're there when we, when we die and we go to meet them. Um, depending on your worldview, obviously. But, uh, yes, I do believe that they are our ancestors. Okay. So I'm going to, that's a quick one. I'm going to go on to the next one, which is from the all in all. Um, who is Jordan? Hi, Jordan. How are you doing? <laughs> Um, can I do a video on magic names? Like, how does one get their own magical name? Uh, thank you for your, all you do for everyone here. Oh, it's a pleasure. Um, all right, so magical names. There, this used to be a big thing in the, the 90s, uh, early 2000s, because at that point, this was before Facebook. And at that point, um, a lot of what you were doing online remained anonymous, um, you know, especially if you were somebody who was not out of the broom closet yet. Uh, you know, you hadn't told your friends and family that you are practicing witchcraft or something like that. You would stay anonymous and therefore you would create um, an anonymous, an, a, or a pen name, um, an anonymous name, a um, pseudonym uh, or a handle that you can use on the internet. Um, and it was great because you could stay anonymous and you could discuss all of this stuff. Uh, and then Facebook came along and wanted to see everybody's faces and, you know, became that thing of uh, identification. And um, because, you know, it started off obviously where a lot of people were scamming you on the internet. Um, you know, because you could, you know, people could stay anonymous and create these different personas. Um, but yeah, anyway, so people used to come up with various names. So there's, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, 
when this whole get a magical name thing was very prominent and you know, it was something you actually it was one of the first things you did when you when you started on the practice not so prominent nowadays but um, a lot of people still like it you would just randomly pick usually randomly pick things that you liked like you know pick a, an animal and pick a some aspect from something else like um you know shadow raven or whatever it may be um but um i think one of the ways what well, the way it happened for me i've had various names i was uh, mamones um at one stage, because I had early on, very early on, I had an experience with um, the god Mabon, and um, I created this handle on on Yahoo. Uh, Mabon is um, Mabon is, um, and that was really my first handle, I think. And then, but it was because of an experience I had a very specific, very profound experience for me. Um, so that that's why I created that. Um, at one stage, I then got the. I became interested in druidry, druidism, and I then created the the name Oakman or the handle Oakman for myself. Um, so this became kind of things that spoke to me that I was interested in, and at the time, and therefore the name reflected um, that that um, aspect of myself, part of my journey. Um, when the name Red Oak came along, that was very different. That was given to me by um, a particular spirit. It was King Gobe, the elemental king of Earth. Um, and it was actually, I sent um, somebody I knew on a journey to meet King Gobe um, and ask us, ask, they, they had to ask a specific question and all such things. Anyway, took them on this, um, this visualization um, or guided meditation path working etc um, and they when they came back they said that um, King Gobe said hello uh, and insisted that I am called Red Oak not Oakman um, so I took the name Red Oak because that's what, what, what was given to me um, and yeah I've, I've had yeah I've had a few names a few different names with it usually they reflected what was happening in my own personal path at the time and they just, you know, they seemed good. Um, they seemed obvious. You know, not that kind of just pick random things from random other things. Um, but yeah, there's there's various various ways you can do this. Uh, I would assume we actually did do go and go. I keep mentioning into the wildwood today because it's a great show. We love doing the show, and there's a lot of information that comes out of it. We did actually do a show on magical names. Um, so go on to Into the Wildwood and just do a search for Magical Names and see what uh, comes up. There should be a show on there. Um, there were some other methods I think we, we mentioned in that show that I can't think of now. But uh, yeah, it was a great one, really good one. Um, Alright, so I hope that, that helps. I hope that answers the question, not sure if it does. But uh, I am going to actually end it there today. Um, I think... If I remember correctly, the next question might be quite a long answer, so I don't want to get into that now. We'll start with that next week. And that's it. So hope you uh, enjoyed that. Hope it answered some things for some people. And have a good one. Cheers for now. Bye-bye.